Hello, welcome to another video blog of the Beer Line. It's been one month since my last uh, posting and a lot has changed. First of all, Humboldt Yard is basically finished. Uh, and I'm going to give you a tour of that here in a moment. And also we'll discuss uh, ongoing project and future projects. So without much ado, we're going to go ahead and start looking around. Well, here we go. Humboldt Yard. At least my version of it, as you can tell. We have it all scenic. Well, I do, since I did the work. So, as you can tell, engine terminal. And a little bit of the neighborhood that kind of was beside the yard, as in on the real one. <clears throat> anyway, so here we go. Here we have the engine facility. You'll see our lonely single Fairbanks Morse H1044 and string of cabooses. Hopefully when Walters gets these switchers painted in orange and black for the uh, current releases, then I can move some of those cabooses and park some of those engines there, along with the uh, Fox Valley transfer caboose when that eventually gets here. Anyway, we got the section house. we got an old water tower. Uh, I don't think it shows up very well in the video, but it's uh, been weathered pretty good. All the pipes and everything rested. Sands as a reminder to the past when Mikado's were the standard tower on the beer line. Another shed right there. Got some various junk setting around in the weeds. Got to have that. And a pile of ties right there as well. Pile of gravel and weeds at the end of the tracks. This is the Milwaukee Road low budget operation. So the ballast on this part and on the yard tracks is a mixture of Woodland Scenics brown ballast, the brown turf, and cinders. Just kind of eyeballed the mix, maybe a little bit of grass thrown in for good measure as well. So, as you can tell, the ground cover over here between the tracks, um, while it has the obvious grass and weeds in it, I also mixed in some cinders as well. So, um, station and freight shed. Now, here's where I deviated from the prototype a bit. I honestly did not care for the brickyard office that was on the prototype. And I love these uh, Milwaukee Road style depots. Uh, this is a resin kit by Depots by John uh, that I painted and, and everything. Actually, it was on my son's layout. So I made a brick platform and decided to make that my yard office. And then American Model Builders Freight Shed, I put that next door as another structure. So um, I just, that's how I want to do it. And it's painted up in the Milwaukee. Um, their paint scheme that they used on their structures, their stations, and, and such during this time. So the two-tone gray. Um, there's my rusted up old power wagon. Shed with the roof sagging. More junk setting in the weeds. Uh, some ties and, well, other junk. Some rails, too. Look at that. Okay. The ballast on the main line, if you call it that, the beer line was really a six mile switching lead, but uh, that is light gray with again some dirt and cinders mixed in. The ballast on the prototype was limestone. Actually, it was pretty white. This could actually stand to be more white, um, but that's what it is. I thought about using Arizona Rock and Mineral, but I needed to really keep my budget in control. And that stuff is about <laughs> good, at least double the price of the Woodland Scenics ballast. I wetted it down with isopropyl alcohol from a medicine dropper and then uh, used another medicine dropper to put my diluted glue on. This is different. Usually I'd use the wet water in a spray bottle, uh, a few drops of detergent with water. But that is just so messy. Uh, doing it this way with isopropyl alcohol really makes a difference. Um, it just It's not as messy. It settles everything down better unless that glue really wick. Now kind of the centerpiece, or end piece, if you will, of Humboldt Yard is the North Avenue overpass. This was a scratch build. And obviously, we're looking at it as if it was just chopped off at the end. The I-beams are plastruck shapes. Um, the tubing is evergreen. Uh, I think everything else is um, evergreen plastics. 40 thousandths for the road base with the beams underneath. Trim, um, you can see I have uh, cross braces as well under there. Um, the railings is 39 thousandths piano wire that I soldered. I soldered those together. 
Uh, painted it flat black, added some rust. Uh, it doesn't come up real well on the camera. So, uh, people running, obviously. The road, um, the road is painted with the uh, with uh, basically cheap acrylic craft paint from um, Hobby Lobby, uh, <clears throat> and uh, stenciled on a stripe down the road, single line stripe as on the prototype. Uh, weathering was a wash of a um, thin grimy black. Followed by a little bit of uh, chalk dust with rubbed with my finger down the middle for the oil stains you find. The concrete and the black on the beams is uh, Rust-Oleum spray paint. Camouflage colors actually. Black and uh, whatever their tan is. The tan makes a good concrete color I have to admit. So, kind of provides a nice um, end piece to the yard. As you can see there's stuff underneath the yard tracks. Looking down the yard, more piles of gravel and ballast and weeds as the end of track. I really couldn't find anything in the photographs. So, anyway, I thought this came out pretty good. My first true scratch building project. So, uh, it took me about two weeks to complete. It really wasn't too difficult. Um, it's the reason why I made it my first real scratch building project. So, anyway, uh, I thought the yard came out really well. It runs really well. The fast track switches are. Um, have been wonderful as far as performance goes. I cannot complain. They look good. They perform wonderful. Not having that hinge in the um, points really helps with the electrical conductivity. If you've never hand laid track before, I'd recommend giving it a try. I probably, the investment I made in materials is about the same as if I bought ready made turnouts, but I've only had to make that purchase once. So from now on, I could build uh, nice high quality turnouts for about seven to eight dollars a turnout. So you can go to your hobby shop and look at the top line turnouts. I think you'll come around 25, 30 bucks a piece. So, all right. And then one last detail, of course, I put on my Milwaukee Road switch stands, which are really just the uh, micro engineering switch stands. And I painted the targets to match the Milwaukee prototype, the Chevron signs, um, which kind of gives it that final little touch. Over here we have the neighborhood, a lot of structures from my layout, my son's, um, the diner that was on his, that's a um, bar mills kit. Um, some houses, uh, city class, or city classics I believe, along with the Rick's house. Uh, Rick's as in R-I-X, I'm going to try and get in here. Look down the street, just a nice little American neighborhood. Uh, this. I guess this is kind of what was around Humboldt. It wasn't really heavy industrialized like downtown. Um, also, I'm modeling a scene that's almost a decade before I was born, so doing the best I can. Uh, Peterson Music. This is named after my friend Tim Peterson. Uh, we went to music school together at college at Butler. Tim's a good guy. Uh, the general store, which was actually on Mealytic layout. Um, Another house. Yeah, it's one of those houses in the neighborhood. Um, back here in the corner, I have tried to figure out what to do with this corner, and I thought about a park. I thought about uh, other things, and finally I took a part of my old limestone mill in the platform and made a um, acetylene distributor warehouse. And I think with these types of trucks seem to work pretty good. The acetylene tanks are the castings from uh, bar mills. A few barrels. Kind of just fills that scene back there. So, anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, my last layout, I had the bridge across the window. This time, I actually put a little basic scenery on it just to help it look better. And then now to the next part of the railroad. I am currently working on the Schlitz grain elevator, not the spent grain silos. This is the elevator where the um, were the grains that were taken from downtown or from the terminal elevator which was a little north of this area uh, around Rock Yard Rock Junction uh, it was brought down from so this is a scratch building project um, the base and you notice everything's just taped onto the core the core is uh, the 3 16th foam core you can buy a nice size sheet of that from Hobby Lobby for around $2.50 a piece. Um, the Rust-Oleum spray paint that I've been using will not harm it. I've already experimented. The windows are from uh, Walter, Walter's Modulars. Um, some of them are actually from uh, parts of my limestone mill that I'm not using. 
and there's just leftovers I had. Um, a lot of evergreen sterene on this, and I emphasize a lot. It is scale height, 135 feet on this part here, which scales out to just over 18 and a half inches. This is about 160 feet, around 22 inches, and this will be about the height of the spent grain silos and the PAPS elevator. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, I've got to do the walls up on top of, I'm guessing this is the hoist house. I'm not really sure. Um, the tower thingy that sticks up. That'll get um, walls. In fact, that'll be something I start tonight. Once that's done, I will glue the walls onto the foam core for a final fit, final trim pieces installed, final smoothing. Uh, the windows are just setting in there. They'll come out, get painted separately, and I'll spray paint this and then hand paint the roof. I'm standing on my toes here to show this to you. And then after that, um, get the uh, overhang that goes over the tracks here put on, and then all the details. After that, I'll do the spent grain silos, which will go right here next door. And it'll be about this height. And then after that, and to don't laugh, this is my cardboard mock-up of the PAPS elevator to get an idea of how things fit in. And to well, give us something to spot um, cars at. And that actually is about the right height. So it'll be like when you come down through this part of the layout, it'll be like looking through the canyon, especially once I get the uh, spent grain silo in there. And that's really what I'm looking for, winding through that canyon. And yes, that's another cardstock mock-up. Um, that's the part of the Schlitz bottling plant that I'll do, as you can tell. And it'll be open like this, and there will be an interior. The Beer Line Modelers Group on Yahoo has one of those. So, um, has pictures of the inside of uh, the Schlitz bottling. So I'll do that. And after that, that'll be after the PAPS elevator, I'll do that part of the Schlitz plant. After that, um, I'll do the PAPS loading center over here at Commerce. Once that's done, it'll be uh, paving time. Uh, there'll be drags in between the tracks here. Eventually I'll have PAPS trucks parked there for the unloading. Um, this will all be paved. The tracks at both elevators will be paved and of course this will all be paved right here at the bottling plant and uh, lots of streets lots of roads so, anyway but that's pretty much uh, the progress so far on the layout and that's it for this month's update on the beer line uh, we'll have one next month in November hopefully I will have a completed Schlitz elevator and an in progress report on the spent grain silo uh, <clears throat> I also picked up a few new subscribers this month, and I apologize that I did not um, write your names down or put them somewhere, and I can't figure out how to see who just joined on my YouTube account, so uh, I apologize to you guys. I appreciate you subscribing, and from now on, I'm going to keep track of who does and uh, mention you in my video blogs. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate your support. So anyway, but until next month. Um, it may be cold and rainy outside here in central Indiana, but it's always summer and the beer is always flowing on the beer lot. So take care and have a good one.